I'm Van. I'm sorry. That's Booby. And Chip and Vita. Sadly, I don't like the name Sody, so we're gonna have to come up with different ones. Send in your thoughts. Sody for sodium, I thought, was an intelligent. Yeah, I, just, I don't like saying Sody because it makes me think of soda and like a baby saying it. It's just, I didn't like it. Or maybe it's just that I don't like the name Booby and saying Booby then Sody is just too much that I don't like. Shout out to all our uh, uh, patrons. Did you just post that thing? No, babe. I was talking to everybody. Okay, so I think we're going to have a, a Fortnite slash Twitch type thing if you're a 25 or above patron. We're going to be posting that pretty soon. So shout out to all you guys. <gasps> Scorpions, Winds of Change. This song, you know how I knew about this song? How? My brother. Remember that time we were at that shelter in New York? Which, which brother? Yeah. Your older we're in like brother. the fourth grade or something like that. I don't His even... brother's here in the room. That's Yeah, anyway, we went to the really school. We went all. to the school temporarily, and my brother went to his first dance, my older brother. Yeah. And he came back singing this song. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'm very curious now. Yeah, my older brother was like a real sentimental dude, so he yeah. went to his dance and all this jazz. Aw. Yeah. How much older is he than you? There was like this really cool video game we were playing at that shelter, but I don't remember what it was. He's like three or four years old than me. Oh, okay. There was a really, really, really cool video game that we play all the time at that shelter or whatever. That's cool. That's the one where you fell down the stairs. I don't know if you remember that. I don't remember that. Mom was so mad. She's like, Mad at who? Because he freaking, he was a baby and they freaking left the, the gates open all lot. So she was mad at the people that yeah. were the shelter? Yeah. She's like, What's wrong with you? I mean, he where was, was she? Well, I mean, she was checking in. There's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I just don't think you can blame them. It's your child. Never happened again. <laughs> I mm -hmm. bet it didn't. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my mother was not the type of person you want no. to make angry. And it didn't really matter who was right and wrong in the situation. No. It just... Did they apologize? <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> you want it with my mom? No, sir. Anyway, so there's my Scorpion song. Sorry. Winds of Change. Shout out to my brother. <laughs> What the hell? Oh my gosh. <laughs> we all have interesting lives now. Okay. <laughs> okay Can you ready? start? Go. Oh, I'm waiting for you to stop talking. Go. Merci beaucoup. Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. I think after all these years, more than anything, this song is still a song of hope. Oh yes, here we go, come on. <laughs> He's running.
Probably don't even know this show. I love Lucy. You ever see that? <laughs> Never saw that. Yes, I'm familiar with the show. I oh. love Lucy. You talking about her husband? Yes, Ricardo. Ricardo. Lucy. Yeah, he kind of had like that sort of voice. I always liked his little yeah. singing singing parts. Okay, him. And then you remember when we had to rent that building when we did that that stuff with the homeless? You remember the guy that rented us the building? Yeah. I liked him. Yeah, he yeah, started yeah, to yeah. finish. I just, yeah. I loved him. He yeah. was such a special person. Just loved him so much. And he was kind of like a mix of those two characters. <laughs> he okay. just, I really liked this. I really liked this one a lot. And you <clears> know what? I didn't realize how many live shows they let everybody sing together. Like that was always a, un I thought it was a unique experience to church that people's voices would sing come together. together, sing together for one thing, for one purpose. Um, but you actually see a lot of that at like different shows and then they have everybody singing and like this one was a, an emotional song. Um, oh yeah, and the homegirl was crying. Yeah, there was a couple people, I'm sure there was more than just a couple people, but even the guy that was, was singing at the end, he looked emotional. Yeah. A little wet around the eyes and a couple well, it, girls were crying. It's uh, it's one of those human... I was holding it back. One of those uh, human spirit songs, you know, that the... Uh, that we can be better than what we are type of things. Oh. Oh, really? That's not what I got from it. <laughs> really? What'd you get from it? Well, I was, um, remember how I was just talking to you about that, how, well, I say Claus, but you said it's Klaus. Yeah. How he will send us prayers and stuff. And, um, like one of the things that he said, which is going to make me emotional just saying it, <laughs> he said in the prayer that, um, that everything that's been lost or taken from you and from me, that God would restore it back a hundredfold like he did with Job. And then I was thinking, obviously we have the baby and like just, you know, just the things that God's doing. And he said like personally and in our ministry or anything, anything that we're doing. And it was just a really cool thing. And then like the song, like the winds of change and stuff, like 
well, we've been through a lot and there's been like a lot of changes and stuff like that. And the, the changes like, but change isn't always bad. Sometimes change is hard, but sometimes the, the winds of change bring good things too. And so that was kind of like, um, I don't know where the children of tomorrow share their dreams with you and me. I don't know. Take the magic of the moment on a glory night. I don't know. The winds of change. That was what I was thinking. Why? What What do you mean? Like, well, this is. Did I miss something? Well, this is, song came out in '91. Yeah. And the Gorky Park in in uh, Moscow. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's in uh, Moscow somewhere. Okay. That's when the whole was it Mikhail Gorbachev, which is funny because Mikhail Gorbachev was like one of the Antichrist. Uh, candidates because he had this birthmark on his forehead and oh my god, you know, really? On the oh yeah, oh my god, of course, and he was Russian. <laughs> There's always a bad, the cyclical, the, the bad guys are always cyclical in evangelicalism. So yeah. for a long time it was the Russians because like they were at the end, we're at the end, very, 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 very end of the Cold War in the early <laughs> '90s, late '80s, early '90s. You know, tear down that wall. Um, and then it was the Muslims, and then now it's going back to the Russians. I thought the Catholics were in there too, the Pope. Well, not in evangelicalism. Oh, I don't know where I heard in, that. In traditional Protestantism. <laughs> oh, okay. The Pope is the Antichrist. Okay, well that makes sense. Right? And then yeah. the, uh, the Catholic Church is the woman who rides the beast. I'm, I'm not a traditional Protestant, I don't believe that. But, uh -huh. but um... But, uh, but yeah, anyway, anyway, so like this is, it was, it, you know, the changes that were happening when the Berlin Wall went down, all that good jazz. Yeah. I'm assuming that that's what it's about. And then when he talks about the, uh, the name of that instrument, I don't know the name of that instrument. Uh, you know, I don't know. It was so or cute. Whatever it yeah. Is. And then let that my guitar. Right at the end. Let right your there. balalalaka and sing what my guitar wants to sing so yeah. i'm assuming that that's like some sort of russian instrument oh and then you have like a western sort of so yeah. it's like the music is going to bring us together in spite mm. of the fact that our two countries were at yeah. each other's throats for the last you know two I see. two three I decades see. or whatever yep. i'm assuming yeah so then the change would be like the movement i was listening to that debate with tucker carlson and um uh Jenk. and one of the things that tucker carlson was talking about was it was this harvard study of how people react to too many different elements coming into their um, to their geography that are not that they're not familiar with, uh -huh. and he was saying that people generally do not react well to that. And it was a hard. And he, he was basically making the case that you know, on the right side where you have this sort of like aversion to immigrants, mm -hmm. Tucker's making you know people are saying, "Oh, you're racist," blah blah blah, and Tucker's saying. So it's not racism or even xenophobia. It's just human nature uh -huh. to where that type of change too quickly yeah. is people are going to react, um, you know, negatively to, negatively to it. Yeah. Huh. And so I mean, it's a Harvard study. Now, all the Harvard study does is it tells us that that's where we're at. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you know, the Harvard study can't tell us the moral implications of that. Is that right or wrong? Um, but I do think it was good for him to bring it up in the sense that, look, these are not racist, xenophobic people that you can just lazily dismiss and say, look at these racist, backwoods people. Mm -hmm. You can say, okay, this is a human nature issue, mm -hmm. and if it's a human nature issue, how do we how do we deal with it? And yeah. I think like the message here is that uh, it depends on how you look at humanity, right? Like, y you have people that if you look at if you look at that type of change and the change of our of our footprint, because you got people that are talking about this stuff that be like, you know, they don't know our language, they don't know this, they don't know that, and you uh -huh. know, I understand that there are like practical implications of, of why it would be positive for everybody to be you know, unilingual, language. yeah, right. <clears throat> I mean, you you can make that case biblically, yeah. When God oh, wanted really? to, yeah, oh. well, God wanted to fuck them up, He just changed their language, <laughs> right? Okay, yeah, that's so true. then if you have a country and you don't have a single language. Yeah. You know, so yeah. so I, I, I get all that on the practical level. I'm just talking about on the meta macro level where it's like <clears throat> if you had the perspective that change is, is actually a good thing mm -hmm. and that change is constantly a good thing, mm -hmm. the only way you can have that is if that you believe that we're progressing toward being better versions of ourselves consistently. Mm -hmm. So if that's your presupposition, we were talking about presuppositions in the fireside yesterday. If that's your presupposition that we're, we're going to constantly progress to become better versions of ourselves, mm -hmm. 
then change is always going to be good. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I see that. But if you have this belief that the world is going to suck and it's always going to be bad and it's going to be terrible, then change is always going to be bad. Right. Because you're going to want to hold on to right. the last vestiges of the good that you have because the change is going to come and take that from mm -hmm. you. So a lot of this has to do with like how you look at the world. I think for us on the American side, you know, in the 80s or early 90s, we were... There was a lot of like, I was just telling Dorian, I was like, man, the 80s were fun because it was bright and it was very colorful, Jim and the holograms and all uh -huh. that, He-Man and Michael Jackson. <laughs> and everything was yeah. just like really like, Ooh, and then we just got really cynical in the 90s, man. Grunge and fucking... <laughs> like, of course, Kirk Cobain's a genius, like I get it. But like even rap in the 80s and early 90s was like, oh, it's fun, you know, uh -huh. and then, you know, then Biggie comes around, bow, bow. Oh my gosh. You know what I mean? So it's just like you you, you get you get kind of like cynical, but in the late 80s, early 90s, man, you karate kid. Yep. You know if there's a bully, fucking crank hit the guy in the nose, he'll learn his lesson. You know what I mean? Like just a very simple uh, answer for everything. Of all in the, the stuff 80s. you just listed listed, the only thing that I was able to see was the karate kid. Really? <laughs> yeah. Now you remember when the kids saw got hold of the karate yeah. kid? They were watching that shit like every day. Yeah, and you know what? There's cursing in it, so I'm actually surprised my parents let us watch it. That was inspiring move, Mr. Miyagi. I think man. That, yeah, there was some good message. Too much in there. knife, too much life lessons, too much Yeah, I know. It, yeah. You know, father figure. Yep. And, but uh, you know, just again, everything was very, very simple and yeah. idealistic in the late eighties, early nineties. You know, mm -hmm. now you got UFC, so, so you know, kids are like, what the, the crank kick? <laughs> crank kick? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like to a takedown. No, and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like that. You know, the chop. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember the chop. Were you around with the chop? Uh, no. The karate chop was like a thing. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. It's like an urban legend. Like, yes. Like you did do some real damage. <laughs> you know, like, so it's just. To me, like this song. I remember hearing kids in the neighborhood say, "I will karate chop you." Yeah, it was real. And yeah, God forbid, if you had an Asian friend, forget those it. Those kids didn't know. You had an Asian friend. I mean, it's racist, whatever. But I will karate. Yeah, chop you. yeah, an Asian friend, man. Love that was a wrap. Real. <laughs> an Asian thing. Uh. <laughs> Nobody in my neighborhood literally knew how to do any of that. <laughs> we were all the same. <laughs> I, I, used to, I used to practice karate, and you know, I saw my Bruce, my first. My stepdad, Mr. Lee, introduced me to my first Bruce Lee Chuck Norris movie. Yeah. He like, hey, hey, come in. He sat me down and he, <laughs> and he had me watch it. And my eyes were like, I'm like, oh my God, Bruce Lee. Uh, and I was practicing the whole time. I kicked a hole in my wall. No, time. see, that's why I would never, no way. That's exactly. But my point is like, there was just so much idealism in the, in the, in the 80s uh -huh. and early 90s, you know? And it was like, a lot of stuff was happening in the world. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. So there was like a lot of positivity here. So I, I think this is about, you know, the change in that was happening globally, right? Mm -hmm. August summer night, soldiers passing by, listening to the wind of change. The world is closing in, and did you ever think that we could be so close like brothers, right? Mm -hmm. So the yeah. world, usually when you see that term closing in, it's a negative thing. Yep. Everything's closing up. But here, he's saying the world is closing in, in the yeah, sense... It's bringing them close. Right. Yeah. It's the world is getting smaller because yep. technology is making us, you know, now... Yeah. I, we talk to people in Sweden and Australia. Norway and Australia. Australia is as far as it gets for us, right? I mean, that's, they're exactly 12 hours the other way. Right. Right. We were talking to somebody in Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iran... And like we're not supposed to be, you know. Oh, I know. Yeah. So like, if we had the channel during the Iraq War, that would have been really interesting. Oh uh, yeah, it would have been. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like this is a this is a really cool like flip of the term closing in. Yep. Because it's not this like paranoid or or negative connotation. Yeah. It's like, did you ever think we could be this close like brothers? Like mm -hmm. you look at each other like brothers. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know. We had that conversation last last night with Adam, atheist Adam. Yep. I'm gonna call him Adam, the honest atheist, and then my buddy <laughs> Alec, you know, and then yep. me. And Alec is like Adam is like uh, one. T he's a something moral, non-realism, moral, whatever atheist. And then Alec is just like, you know, Sam Harris. You know, he's like a disciple of Sam Harris. Uh huh. <laughs> Sam Harris is like his pope. <laughs> he's like a swear to Shiva and Sam Harris. Yeah, I know. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And then there's me, the right one, no, uh, the Christian. But it's like, it's cool because like we're all talking and we're disagreeing and blah, uh -huh. blah, blah, and, 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 and that's one of the reasons, honestly, like, 
we don't do ad hominem here. We do our best not to do ad hominem here. So if you like disagree with somebody in the chat and there's a jihad, like go for it. Say the person is making a bad argument, da 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 da. But don't insult them personally. Don't go after them personally because that's not what we're trying to accomplish in our in our community, right? Because right. Right. it's like we can be close like brothers. But I follow my brothers all the time. <laughs> I disagree with them all the time. Really? Yeah, because they're, they're you know they. Did they, you hear him? Because they they're wrong. <laughs> they were wrong. Wow. Anybody that disagrees with me is wrong. Is that true? Jamie, you were constantly wrong? Yes. What? Why would you say that? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, no, but like, you, you, like, that's really good. The future's in the air. I can feel it everywhere blowing in the wind of change. So it's like this positive view of the future, which as post-millennialists, yeah. you know, like we believe that the Bible actually has a positive view of the future, not a not a crazy, right. horrible, terrible, everything's gonna go to hell view of the future. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it's amazing to me that people are like, what do you mean a positive view of the future? Everything's screwed up. It's like, how are you talking to me right now? Right. <laughs> right. I was just in a chat room, what like four days ago, with a dude from Australia, a dude from Ireland. Was it Ian is from Ireland or whatever UK? And a couple Americans, like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Like, and we all get to talk to each other and chill with each mm -hmm. other, you know? And some of you, I'm going to play with you on Fortnite. And, and we can see them, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, some of them, you just hear their voice, but then other ones, you get to actually see. You know, we had Ben the other night. He was at work. <laughs> right. He was listening to our show from work. You know, just going to town. He kept working though. Right, yeah, he's doing he was thing. listening, yeah. yeah. He was working, he was efficient. But I'm like, well, these tech technology now, you know? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, and it, the other, it, the, the positive side I was saying yesterday in the fireside was everybody's like trying to blame the media for everything. Uh huh. And I said, we are the media now. Mm hmm. Yeah. Right, we've been around for six months. Yep. You know, 72,000 subs, 12 point, you know, 7 million views, right? Yeah. So it's like, okay. And that that's all of us came together and, and did that as a community. Mm -hmm. So when I say we are the media, I'm not saying we are the media because we own the channel. I'm saying we are the media because we all take part in it. Every right. comment, every comment that you put on there, that that's all media. Mm -hmm. So then you the, then it's like my my point yesterday was like take responsibility for the fact and put some positive energy out into the ether. Mm -hmm. Right? Because there's enough of this partisan bullshit that's tearing us all apart. Right. Because there's a small group of people that benefit from our from us being at each other's throat. Right. So one side of that is like take responsibility and put some positive stuff in the ether. The other side of that though is to say, shit, we've got the capability to do something positive in a way in an exponential way that's never been done ever by normal yeah. people in human history. Ever. Right. So like this song right now is like idealistic in the sense of, yeah, you're a rock star and you can say that and reach a bunch of people, but a normal person would be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, it's like, we could literally activate the the, the dreaminess of this song. Yeah, yep. And I think that that's just crazy. It's crazy to me that we have the... The capability of So a lot of it is like, what you presuppose, like what you assume is gonna happen in the world dictates how you're going to engage the world. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it also dictates what For you sure. tolerate. Yep, definitely. So like if you presuppose that ad, people are just going to be ad hominem and insult each other all the time, then you're going to tolerate it because you're yeah. going to say, of course. Well, this is what's happening. This is the world. Yeah, but if you think people are higher than that, then you're going to you're, you're going to expect tolerate higher that. things, and you're going to say, hey, why are you saying that? Don't say that to each other like that. Yeah. Yep. I'll, I'll ban you. <laughs> Don't bring you back. If you have the winds of change. Hmm? <laughs> is that my hmm? I think we can sit there. <laughs> It, again, it's very interesting to me. I know the song came out in 91. There are a bunch of young kids in that audience yeah. crying and singing it. Yeah. So it's like, again, like the timelessness. Yeah, but I don't even know where this this um, live show was at. Was it around where some of that awful stuff was happening and where they were trying to come together? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. This was two years ago? This is a two years ago one? Yeah, I don't know if it said it, Hellfest. Hellfest 2015. I don't know where, where that is. But I mean, but... even still... Well, you can they see They were 19, why. 20 years old. It looked like those kids were 19, 20 years old. Yeah, but if they had been through, like, the, the separation and then the coming up together, like, you can see how it would make them emotional. Not if they were 19 or 20. They what? Wouldn't do that. They wouldn't have been through that. They wouldn't have... Wouldn't they would have been born around 9-11. Oh. Right? See what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying, yeah. So that yeah, would have been... Know. That would have been long gone, you know, by that time. So it's like... But it's just like the Iron Maiden song where it's it's... These bands have been around for 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. and you got these kids just singing their hearts out, yeah. crying, yeah. because the music is timeless mm -hmm. and the principle is timeless. I, totally think that, agree. I think that that's that's crazy to me that 
There's only a couple bands that can do that. Yep. You know what I mean? And like, you know, like if you look at popular, like you know, we did the Suicide Silence thing. Yes, you know, mm-hmm. and it was you know, it's a cool song, blah blah blah. But do you think like in 20 years people are gonna be like? <laughs> not like this. I I just don't yeah. like I, I you know. Not like this. Yeah. I, I think there are a lot. There are very few bands. They can do that. I think smells like Teen Spirit. Forty years from now, people, kids, a kid finds that song and they're like, "Oh my God, yes, <laughs> I'm angry too." You know what I mean? But like, I, I have the majority of the songs that are out or bands that are out right now, like how many of them have like, like timeless uh, capabilities? I don't mm-hmm. know. What do you give the song? Um, I give it a ten. I think that it's obviously a ten. Word to our sponsors before you ask: Why didn't you do the studio version? It will be blocked. We keep saying it. We keep, keep repeating that. It. it will be blocked. Hmm? Uh, oh, yeah, it's a 10 for me. It's a 10 for me. Probably one of the best live performances, too. Mm-hmm. In the sense of getting Did you like him? Involved. Did you just like no, him? No, I did. I liked him. Yeah, me too. Fajal. Obviously. Although, like, the quality of his vocals live versus yeah. in the studio from what I remember is is not is not really there. Oh really? And as a guy, yeah, I mean I, I didn't hear it. It's not Ronnie so. James Dio, that's for sure. Oh huh. Speaking of Dio, where are we at with that? Are we officially on with them now? No, I'm waiting for them to email me back and if they don't email me by Monday Tell I'm the nice call them. So we're gonna I am pretty sure that we're gonna go with um, Ronnie James Dio, um, the foundation that he started, which is Children of the Night. And they basically like they they make it they're I guess the only place in America where like if a child is being trafficked and they're like in some sleazy hotel, they can call them directly and they'll snatch them out of there and they don't put them in some like holding place that's basically like a prison or make them testify against the pimp or anything like that. They just get them to a good place and get them the education that they need and the home that they need. And um, so we're what we're doing is we're taking some of the money that we get from Patreon from all of our patrons and we're taking it and like donating it toward that charity. But I'm waiting to get a little bit more information because I didn't see anything about Ronnie on that site. And I clicked on the history thing and there wasn't really much there. He did a song called Children of the Night. He, he did and well somebody sent us a link and I told him to email it to us. <clears throat> um, one of the children from that organization wrote a song and then he did it. So I guess that's a pretty, I, so when we officially do like that, then I think that that can be like our, our thing. So I think it, it was like ch- called Children of Trash or something like that. Like just the, what the, the kids see themselves as <laughs> so sad. But um, so yeah, so we're looking forward right. to really being able to like, um, I can't remember that. I, I probably didn't quote it right, but it was something terrible like that. So um, looking forward to really being able to do that, like as a community and all of us working together. So. Um, so thank you to all the patrons who are making that possible and um, and for the person you know well who done, you guys. are who threw in an extra amount of money on the side that said, hey, like when you do it, start it out here with a bang. You know who you are. And, um, you, you know, a lot of you would if you could. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So if, if you um not in a situation where you can jump on and do all that stuff, then, you know, be good to somebody. Literally, it sounds corny, but... Be good to somebody. Yeah, and some people are like concerned about like, oh, I can only give a dollar a month and they feel like that that's nothing. Like, seriously, like every every bit of us, especially when there's more of us, every bit of us that does, you know, a little bit, like we, we all work together and then it, it creates something much bigger than any of us could be singly. So, um, so anyway, thanks again to our patrons. And yeah, that's it. It's good. The 10 for me. Me too. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Good message. Uh, you know, it... it I like it when people are like brave enough to be corny. Mm-hmm. This is kind of corny, but I still like it. I think it's corny. But I like corny, so. Then out. Story out. Gone. <laughs>